So with me today are old friends, and I'm older than the old. So uh, Praveen Kamat and Charman Naik. I know them from the last twenty years when they were young boys in a Linux user group in Goa. So Praveen and uh, Sharmad, uh, you were a young professor, Sharmad, that time already. But uh, tell me a little about your experiences then with Linux, your experiences now with Linux. You know where all it's going. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, Linux has grown quite a lot uh, uh, as I see it today, right? Uh, more than Linux, I would say uh, it's it's also open source which has grown, right? Uh, earlier we used to, I remember uh, when we used to be uh, working with, as kids, right, uh, helping, uh, uh, providing a helping hand uh, in, in the lugs, right. And for lugs being have, use Linux user groups, the yeah, right. voluntary groups that were there to build and spread awareness about Linux. Correct, yes. Yeah. So when we were uh, even providing a helping hand in uh, the ECAP, right? yeah. I remember there used to be a lot of uh, hardware uh, compatibility issues that we used to get in. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that were probably coming in was that open open source was not into hardware. And today we have broken those bounds. Open uh, source would not work with, uh, the software would not work with the hardware correct, and there was a yeah. huge uh, huge gap. There was there was proprietary issues, uh, people didn't want to share their design. Drivers and were not but available. Yeah, with, uh, with things like uh, Raspberry Pi today which has come in, right, uh, it's on version 5 which is also having AI integrated into, into it, right? And uh, then Audrino, which is used for developing robotics. We'll come to that later. I know yeah. you're a great fan of Raspberry Pi and all. But tell us about your early encounter with uh, Linux in Goa. How did it happen and uh, what did you find useful in it? Yeah, so uh, I remember uh, getting in touch uh, with faculties from uh, Goa University, right? And Professor uh, Butt. Professor Butt. Uh, then Professor Kamath. Kamath, V.V. Kamath. Yeah, V.V. Kamath. So, I think uh, they... Br uh, Maybe Ramdas Karmali. Ramdas, and Ramdas Karmali. Karmali, correct. Uh, so, they brought in that vibe. They gave me the vibe to understand what power it has, right? And I can actually see that how, uh, uh, how well it has gone. I mean, the open source community has still been able to contribute to it and um, been able to make huge strides into that space, right? So yeah. Uh, so all these youngsters were actually, you know, taking it forward, using it, contributing back to it. Yes. So uh, so uh, yeah. So every everybody was sort of uh, it was it was available online that time. We did have yeah. internet issues at that particular point in time. Today the network speeds are much better, right? We have uh, repositories which are available online, and but I think that's where uh, the community has grown. Uh, India has also contributed back to it, though the contribution yes. may not be so visible or well known, but India and Indians have contributed back to free software yes, and open yes, source. Definitely, and, and you can see that in a, uh, a version of Linux called Kali Linux, right? Uh, it's there everywhere. It's popular, you were saying? It's very popular. Why? Uh, it, it, it's very stable. Uh, it's used for uh, seeing to it that. Um, your system, I mean, they have very rigid security uh, built into it, right? Uh, they have taken care that, okay, this version of Linux is not going to be easily penetrable. Uh, it's very stable and uh, and it works across various nice. platforms, right? Right from a desktop to a small uh, device. Right? So who is it popular with today? Uh, it, it, it goes both on the desktop side as well as uh, the Raspberry Pi, right? So okay. So yeah, uh, Praveen, tell us about your journey. Uh, yeah, so I was in uh, PCC. So as uh, as I went in my fifth fifth semester, uh, Sharman was two years my senior in PCC. So back in 2001, I saw him in the computer science lab uh, installing Linux. So then I went and asked him, and he told me that this is Linux operating system, and this is how it works. So I was pretty bowled over. And uh, at that time, I, we used to use Windows 98 SE, which was highly unstable. It used to crash every month and so on. So then um, I, I installed uh, Red Hat 7.1. You remember the numbers and yeah, everything? Yeah, 7.1, yeah. And it had to be installed within the first 1024 cylinders of the hard drive. Okay, uh -huh. that was the requirement. Then subsequently, we had a lag meeting in Madagao where uh, Linux uh, Red Hat 7.2 was, uh, uh, was circulated, which used the EXT3 file system. I remember so, that. Yeah, so it was, it was a big system, thing, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and uh, since then uh, I, I moved on to Linux. I was using Windows as well, but uh, uh, what I noticed was that, uh, that the device drivers for Linux, the sound card and the graphics card drivers for Linux were way, way superior than what you had for Windows 98 or for Windows XP at that time. This was back in 2002. Uh, subsequently, Sharmad joined uh, PCC as a lecturer and he taught us computer networks and Sharmad happened to be my project guide as well. My project was on developing a network monitoring software and I was doing it under Ramdas Karmali, Professor Ramdas Karmali at uh, Goa University and Sharmad was teaching us computer networks at that time. So both of them were hardcore Linux experts and uh, we benefited a lot under their mentorship. So this is where I moved into Linux and uh, subsequently after graduation in 2003 uh, I also started using Mandrake, Mandrake 8. It has become Mandriva now. So Mandrake 8 I used and uh, then uh, when I graduated in 2003 there was shortage of jobs in the software software area and then I realized that in the Linux area at that time back in 2003 there were not many jobs. So reluctantly I had to switch to Windows uh, software development in .NET, uh, Visual Basic .NET and uh, SQL Server and all. So I worked in a startup in Goa itself and subsequently went to Narsimhanju to do my MBA. Then uh, when I did my MBA, I completed my MBA in 2008, uh, I joined SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. Uh, and then since then, uh, I've been in the area of finance. But uh, Linux has always been there with me. I use in my in my home desktop as well as in the laptop. Uh, I always have a dual boot system. Uh, I always use Linux. So I have right now three laptops in which uh, I have installed elementary OS. I have What's one, elementary? Uh, it's a new OS uh, that has come three three years, three to four years back, uh, which is based on the Linux kernel. But it is a fusion. The interface is a fusion of uh, of, of uh, your Mac OS and and Windows. You can say, and uh, it has a separate set of applications which need to be installed uh, to use that. It's a very very stable OS and it's developing. I see. Developing. So I found it to be very very good. Uh, I use Ubuntu, and uh, at times. Uh, I'm into cyber security also, so Kali Linux at times, uh, because Nmap and uh, TCP dump we use. And uh, at times I experiment also, uh, I go to distrowatch.net and um, they give you the list of top 10 yeah. operating systems which are being downloaded. Distrowatch was there that time also, no? I it check, kept there. track of yeah. all the distros. Yes. It is still there, it is still there and often, often times, you know, the number one keeps on changing there. Uh, six months back it was Manjaro Linux, now it is Mint. And then in between Debian was also there and, and so on, you know. So I download, I install and I try it out and, uh, and do it. I have tried this uh, OS, uh, Russian Linux OS uh, called uh, Ro Rosa Linux. Rosa Rosa. Linux or Rose, Rose, Rosa Linux and that was also pretty good interface. I, I had tinkered with it and it was pretty good. So that's how it is. But I keep on using Linux. Right amazing, now. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So this guy Sharma, tell us about, uh, you know, what uh, Raspberry Pi. And yes. how it is applicable in that sense to our needs? So I, I got uh, exposed to the Raspberry Pi um, way back in 2010. Uh, one of my friends was using it and uh, he showed me that, okay, uh, it, a credit card size uh, uh, motherboard, right? It yeah. had the compatibility with uh, connecting to a monitor, plugging in an Ethernet uh, cable, right? everything which was built on board with a C, uh, with an ARM CPU, uh, you could actually run Linux on that. It's that powerful point. enough, it's fast? Yeah, at that particular point in time, I remember it was around 1 gigahertz and uh, today it's, 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 it has much more processing power than that. Uh, right. So, uh, initially I just started on with it, uh, started experimenting, uh, working on Python uh, and Perl at that particular point in time, right? Uh, those were the favorites <laughs> and it still continues to be. Uh, so, uh, so we started working on it and I realized that okay, uh, the, the world has thought much more uh, in terms of open source community than uh, uh, on all the points that basically they had hurdles on. Right? They have overcome that. Uh, and uh, today it's not only Raspberry Pi, there are other boards which are also available. Like? Uh, Beagle Bone Black. Right, uh, then there is something called Mango Pie. Uh, so there are many bo many boards like this which have come, uh, which offer you the capability not only to have a, a desktop uh, or a or a system at home, uh, uh, which is equivalent about like fifty dollars. Right, uh, that's the price which is wow. uh, which is there in uh, US. But yeah, once it converts to Indian currency, it it, it varies. Yeah. Right. Uh, 
and then uh, you can not only do that you can even have uh, they even provide you uh, pins over there on it right where you can uh, you can have uh, sensor uh, capabilities provided on that right so you can you can uh, capture the humidity you can capture the temperature wow. right and uh, you can do whatever like pass that particular information online onto your portal whatever you create website or anything amazing and so the no? live tracking of everything i see so uh, not only that people have even gone beyond that and uh, uh, made mimicis i mean mi mimic the google home kind of an environment with that right? i see so google home in the sense google home is like uh, Uh, a a small uh, chat bo a chat uh, app uh, sorry chat device where you can just give instructions uh, to that device say just okay. say hey google and uh, ask whatever questions you want right then it goes on the internet and uh, finds out the response uh, for your question okay and provides you the answer so people have actually gone ahead and uh, try to uh, do a lot of experiments on that and uh, it has sensors to it to to take your input uh, processing happens in linux right on an arm processor and since it's a very small device you can hide it anywhere right uh, it's not uh, not so big and it yeah. doesn't take a huge amount of power also it's, okay. it's very small so yeah i think uh, linux has taken a lot of strides and been pretty uh, maturely developing somewhere along the way we lost our interest and uh, missionary zeal to promote it you were the kari right 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 uh, i remember the lag meetings that used to happen in 2002 2003 yeah. and uh, we had we used to have good attendance probably 30 yeah. 30 35 people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that time it was a new movement and it was right. uh, very it was everything was uh, like you know a big revelation yeah. to us no but i think uh, a lot of it goes to information today available so easily right Uh, at that particular point in time we needed to, each other we needed yeah, we needed each other so uh, so i would be dependent on a, on a lot of folks to understand what are the new things happening uh, similarly the problems that we had uh, we had very limited uh, access uh, to getting answers on that right today information is there everywhere yeah. uh, so it becomes very i mean that could be one of the reasons is what i'm thinking but yeah i think definitely at the end of the day we need to connect Right, interesting as, as human being uh, that is how we grew who do you remember from those days uh, from the lag yeah uh, professor anil saint he yeah. was my teacher in computer science sharma yeah. of course he was again my lecturer yeah uh, arvind yadav uh, i remember animesh nerurkar yeah uh, my classmate sanil uh, talaulikar <laughs> yeah. was very active and i believe is still active yeah uh, and, and uh, derek cortero randall yeah. rodrigues yeah. randall rodrigues who yeah. was there for ecap 2003 Uh, at a hotel mandovi that you, you, you should not forget petit no 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 yes, no but i the one interviewing us <laughs> i i must tell you this funny incident when you said randall it triggered off my memory we were, he called us to his house once at verna yes and you know we treated everyone as equals me forgetting that i was about good 20 years senior to you all if not more right right so i went to his house and i saw he said this is my dad and all i said hello uncle this that the other and then about 2 minutes in the conversation i thought to myself bloody hell he must be 3 or 4 years older to me <laughs> what am i calling him uncle for but like you know it was that kind of you know so yunus was there yunus yes yunus yunus is in saudi and all that i've been in touch so with him so gaurav priyorkar was my back gaurav i remember then uh, hiren lodia hiren uh, lodia yeah, yeah. hiren i remember hiren i remember uh, that girl with long hair no what was her name gc i think so photos were showing up the other day in our lag meeting okay. prachi prachi no not prachi something i forget then shama fernandes uh, albert govea albert govea yeah, right right yeah okay yeah. what was vijon bisha vijon sha yeah. vijon is still active and of course jana yeah. jana was for a little while the vice acting vice chancellor of goa university yeah. in between vice vcs so that was quite a prestigious thing not only that he he has been a huge mentor in the field of botany in goa and i think you no know, somewhere this open source sharing knowledge uh, atmosphere also has caught him quite strongly maybe he had it first also but everyone respects him so much they named one or two or three or four or five grasses after him grasses with the latin names which they found for the first time in goa yeah. so they named it after him janardensis or something like that wow. if you google the net you will find that that's it 
all kinds of guys were there no and of course mr joshi was with the science center he was very prone to us he was open to us and he would give us the use of the science center and of course first we used to meet at uh, computer, uh, computer science computer science center, center. Yeah. Computer Society, CSI, CSI, Computer CSI. Society of India. Right. Mr. Mamri was there. Mr. Yeah. Mamri, yes, yeah. Mr. Mamri. Prashant Kunkolekar. Yeah. Prashant Kunkolekar. Uh, who else was there? That uh, that guy, no, from Margaon. Kamat, Kamat, Santosh Kamat. No. Santosh Kamat. All these were stalwarts. Like they were a right. little bit senior to us. Yeah. And we used to have a lot of uh, college crowd also coming in. Yeah. So uh, I would see a lot of folks uh, from college who were. Wanting to get away, break their, uh, 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 move away from Windows, right? Because that was the, the yeah. time when Windows uh, was trying to play big. Yeah. They had a lot of restrictions on terms of, in terms of uh, developing apps, and, and uh, at that particular point in time, they, the engineering students, I would see that they wanted to get away from that, and rather focus on something where they can learn more. Right, much more than I remember the time Stallman came to Goa and we took him to the yeah. GEC. Correct. And uh, yeah, 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 somewhere, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. And then uh, there was uh, who's that? Uh, George Esau and uh, Professor Aidu. and Carlos Fernandez, who was in the who was the librarian there, happened to become the curator of the Central Library, Goa University. So we crossed a lot right. of paths in a different context. But I remember we had a talk in the library when 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 he was there. Uh, talking about his his point that he made regarding sharing of information, I agree. That time we were on dial-up internet, which was very very expensive. Yeah. And information was not uh, readily available. CDs even, we could not get. Right. We could not get and CDs. We used to buy CDs, right. no? Yeah. And so even downloading software was an expensive proposition. Yeah. You very know, very very. When it was 64 kbps uh, dial-up line. And we had limits, no? Right. Some limits of yeah. time or, yeah. or bandwidth would, or something yeah. like that. It would disconnect. Right. And yeah. A lot of issues. So our only source of information about Linux was the Isla Goa meetings that we used to have monthly and, and, and Yahoo groups. Yahoo groups and also shifting to uh, Bangalore we used to go for their meetings in right, December. Right. Right. They used to welcome us because we were an organized group, a cohesive group and we used to go in big uh, numbers and have a picnic on the in the train or on the bus or whatever and stay together and all that. Right. But you know what happened, you asking me what happened to Isla Goa, some problems came up on the way. One was that Yahoo groups died, Right. right. Yahoo groups suddenly died and they took a full archive with it here. Yeah. I have the full backup you of have? Yahoo groups. Yes, I, hey. have, I have downloaded and kept it. Uh, I had got an intimation from uh, Yahoo groups that they will shut down. Okay. And then the archives will go. Wow. So I took a full dump of the Isla Goa Yahoo yeah. group. How long did it take me? you? How long did it take you? Uh, it took around, I think, uh, you have to apply for a backup and then they, they would send you a link by email one day later or something yeah. like that. And then, uh, <coughs> to yeah. download, to download would have taken yeah. a long time, no? No, no, no. I, no? I, 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 by the time I was having a... Fast line. Uh, in Bombay. line at home, yeah. In Bombay, uh, Mumbai. Yeah. So right now, uh, I am based in um, Gibb City, Gandhinagar yeah. and I have two 300 Mbps fiber optic lines at my house, you know, so... <laughs> 300? It's 300 like, Mbps, like yeah. blinking speed? Yeah, blinking speed, yeah. So one GB gets downloaded in really? one time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. At home, at home in fact. Yeah. I see. So high speed internet. So that time bandwidth was an issue. In bandwidth was days. a major issue and it was very, very expensive at that time. Yeah. So Getting computers to work was a major yeah. issue. And, right? and even computer hardware was extremely expensive. Yeah. Storage was extremely expensive. People didn't know how computers worked. I remember right. I bought, a, uh, what was it? It was a card modem. Card modem yeah. for my computer. And the guy who sold it to me, of course, two things. He didn't know how to get it started. God bless his soul. He's a <laughs> nice guy. But he didn't know how to get it started. So he gave me a refund on it. But before doing that, he said, you know, it had something written there. This is Windows compatible. He said, ah, fantastic. He said, this is Windows compatible. You'll get Windows with it, he said. <laughs> You'll get Windows with it. <laughs> you know, so, so this was like, I don't know, when 91, 92 or something like 93. Amazing. Those were the days when you used to install Linux using uh, floppies also, I think 120 yeah. floppies for, for one uh, Linux. Uh, Not 120, nah, right. 120. Or Unix it was, I think, Unix. Unix yeah. 120? 120? Yeah, yeah, 120 floppies. Floppies, yeah. floppies, yeah. floppies yeah. five and a half inch? No, five and one three, fourth? Three, three, three and a half, half three, three and a half. half. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that was there was a time when even I, I remember having a CD drive on the system was, was a big, uh, big was thing, a big, big thing, big thing, yeah. big thing. So and then getting it getting it compatible with installing Linux was another uh, <laughs> another achievement. So yeah, you know youngsters of today will never understand that. Right? right? They think like yeah. which which. So, uh, today, if I I mean I remember I learned uh, RAID uh, while we uh, while I, I I could get a live demo from folks in luck, right when. 
then uh, they would they would explain uh, raid and from where so where were they uh, abroad they, no no from uh, from our lab only okay the linux, linux user group right, okay. from goa so they would show me how raid works and i remember i was i used to be fascinated at that particular point in time because i never knew you could just pull a hard disk out and your system would still be running and uh, yeah that gave me a different perspective of how computers were right at that particular point in time and today if i talk about raid uh, to folks right i sometimes really wonder if they really get into uh, that level of interfaces uh, okay. to understand how uh, it actually works right we were we were given live demos we were we were shown at that particular point you can just pull the drive and see it still works nothing happens you just push magic, it back magic magic you just push it back and it just starts it's like open heart surgery no when you're yeah. when you're seeing it the first time yeah so it it, it was really fascinating i mean uh, that's that, those are the those were the things i remember really uh, set me apart from uh, thinking that linux was just not an operating system that there's much more to to it at that point in time Yeah, it was the it was the the network, the human network, which made the difference, no? Right. Yeah. And the memories are so strong. I can remember every place we met at, right, right. from Science Center to ECAP to uh, uh, the school in Adarsh Vidyalay in Margao. Margao, yes. And uh, D-Link, D-Link, which rolled out their red carpet for us in Verna. And GC, once or twice yeah, we came and sat there. We came and sat next to the canteen and had a meeting. And then we would sit on Science Center on the lawn also. No, I remember. I remember Janardan sitting on the lawn. I have photos of him there, and all these foreigners would drop in. You know, some Firang and anyone there, they would see. Okay, Goa, Lag, they would find something on him, and they would come. So that way, also we attracted a whole lot of strange people. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, just like the way Linux has developed, right? I think uh, we, uh, the Linux user group, also has moved a lot now. And uh, yeah, uh, things have gone from small devices. Like IoT devices, which are capable of having it, to as big as uh, uh, rack servers, right? Uh, which are capable of uh, having the same version of Linux running on it. So yeah, definitely, I think uh, a lot of progress on that front. What's What's yeah. there for the future? What uh, some people have the view that you know, uh, GNU Linux is all over the place. There's no need to pr- promote it anymore. Do you agree with that, or do you think that maybe the style of promoting will have to be different? or the new generation will look up to new challenges or they may they may not need they may consider what we did as elementary or, or how do you see it i think tough question <laughs> because uh, the industry is changing every every uh, every now and then right i think uh, a lot of work is happening on linux with ai right um, i mean yeah that's the that's the new beast which is available for everyone right to explore on but uh yeah uh, i i do see a lot of uh, opportunities coming in uh people are scared to get into ai for different reasons but i see that as, a, as an opportunity right uh, definitely is there to help you uh, so yeah uh, we should embrace it and we should uh, see how we can uh, move forward with that particular part and uh, yeah uh, like i said earlier uh it works from uh, anything which is there on your uh, on your watch to anything uh, that can go on big devices right so you can actually have a spectrum today microsoft also supports uh, uh, having uh, ubuntu on your uh, it's uh, ubuntu is there on the play store of the us i so, see so you can actually have uh, linux on on microsoft today and microsoft also embraces that so yeah i think uh, there have been a lot of strides uh, in 20 years things have really mood a lot as well i i see it's so nice that you all guys also come back keep in touch and maybe we can have a lag meeting whenever you're here Absolutely. even this time even this time so, so fred i remember used to write for linux for you back yeah. in 2003 2004 and once upon a time those articles were available on the net but i i couldn't find those articles lately you know when okay. i was searching for your uh, your columns you wrote a lot yeah, on yeah, yeah. quest and linux i restarted you. not the columns but feature articles so i restarted with them but i need to yeah. be a bit more regular yeah. on that there I is one that particular that article in 2004 which you published in which both our names are mentioned i wanted i wanted that article in linux we will find it we will find it you know but the I month find i uh, you know I, the I, month? it was 2004 what that right? i know yeah I, I 2004 remember. In 2004, I know for sure. And you I all had done some project or something. What was that about? Uh, my project 2003 was a network monitoring tool uh, I had done under Professor Ramdas Karmadi. Uh, 
So well, I used to come out with good stuff, yeah. yeah. Even and though Goa was a small place, yeah, and you know, a project group, college project group, uh, four others were there in that. Who was that? Uh, who were there? There was Sunay Kamat, uh, who was from Apsa, uh, Vilok Shinde, uh, Virat Shirdaokar, and Dr. Mahatme. So all four of them I am in touch with. Right? Yes. They are in different places, scattered yes. across yes. Uh, yeah, across the world. Really? Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. As far as the tech scene in Goa is concerned, what are your views? We we have a mismatch between the people we produce and the jobs we can offer, or yeah, majority of the tech talent like Sharma they emigrate to uh, other cities because the jobs uh, are are yeah. not there. Uh, the talent definitely is there beyond a shred of doubt. And uh, if 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 there was any way that these jobs could shift back to Goa, the people would happily shift back to relocate to Goa. In fact, yeah. within this Goa IT professionals, the GITP group. Some of them are pushing with that, like you know that we need the right policies or whatever, right. or the right uh, networks and all that will help make this happen. Right, right. Because it's quite you know the industry is also quite Goa friendly in that sense. No, if it's small, if it is uh, decentralized and all that. Goa has the right uh, temperament, if if uh, if I may give my opinion, to to become a startup hub, because for yeah. small small firms, uh, I worked in a startup in Goa back I in two thousand four. It has the right atmosphere and the right ingredients. People love coming here also. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I was there here during uh, uh, between the different phases of COVID, right? Uh, I, I was see. There for, for for almost a year. Really? And uh, you are based in Margaon, sir. No, no, in Panjim. Panjim. Yeah, so uh, I was there here, and we had a good time uh, at that point, right? Uh, yeah, there are there are positives of being in a small place also, you know. You have a good quality of life. Okay, that's Definitely, true. That's right? true. That's true. So, and with the network, people you know, people you grew up with, and all, it's different, no? Right. It's always different. Though, of course, the opportunity of a big city cannot be denied. Yeah. Right. Let's not deny it. No, I mean the opportunities are just the exposure, right, right. That's exposure that's opportunities, right, yeah. but then it's a form of exile, which is sad, no? Yeah. That's true. Which is also sad. I don't know. But it's but I uh, things can change. Yeah, things things can change, change, should change. You know, the the perception change. has to change. Uh, you know, you never know when you change go, comes. Go 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 in some places and speak with erudite people overseas. They think that Goa is a holiday destination. Right? Yeah, and it starts there and it ends there. You know? Yeah, people are not aware that there is National Institute of Oceanography yeah. in Goa. There is a science center in Goa. There is a university. Which but maybe students. maybe Pravin, we should trap them with this thing of conference. Right. holidays right. you know like the linux group also they got caught up with this idea once of what was it uh, linux on a boat or something like that right. wow. <laughs> where you have a sem you know like you have a seminar on santa monica for one day or something like that or two days or something and unfortunately we didn't have the the clout and the organizing capability to pull it off otherwise people are willing to come at a drop of a hat drop of a hat yeah. see goa means like straight away antennas up that's true. No? You know, you, yeah, I mean, but whether we have the capability to organize it like how they do in the big cities, no? I've seen Bangalore, I've seen Hyderabad. You can, you know, people have a different approach there. Yeah, and people so, are. Uh, I mean, you you see a lot of talent coming from the schools. Uh, I was in my daughter's school, and I was surprised the way they have used Bangalore Linux. Uh, Bangalore in Bangalore. Uh, this was just last week. And, I see. Uh, they are. They are. Uh, there was there were students who were doing. Um, analysis about uh, ta just taking the test results right of your uh, body and trying to predict what what disease you have. Really? Uh, and these were not uh, students who are. Uh, I mean, these were not. They, they are like 10 standard, 9 standard students who are doing it. So uh, I was really impressed by My the amount gosh. of exposure uh, folks have. Right. Uh, so, yeah. After years, it's paying off. No, Bangalore, like we used to say, it's all hype and all. But like you know, no, if you I keep on believing in yourself for so long, something is bound to no, work. I, I think it's also to a certain extent the connect, right? Uh, 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 so they also have the exposure, uh, and they also have the connect, right? Uh, they have the network. Netcalls, Netcalls. What's it? Netcalls theorem or whatever it's called. Netcalls. Metcalls. 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 What? Some something. Uh, I, I don't remember. Metcalf's rule or something yeah. like that. If the network is bigger, then you're obviously going yeah, to. And th there are folks to guide. Uh, there are folks to um, uh, give give their thoughts on um, uh, the support is available, right? I think we, the the same uh, sort of thing should be uh, coming. I mean, it's there, but I think we yeah. just need to we just need to make it more yeah. evident, right? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. The support is there. It is there, but probably not visible, not not, visible. not recognized. Yeah. No, it's like Goa's pharma sector. No, it was growing, 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 and no one noticed it. Also, then one fine day, it's there. Yeah. 
Correct. And it's doing well. And you know, how did it grow? No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> Correct. So no, like that. So the, the IT sector is all, also there because I have a few friends. So. But nothing like in Bangalore and places like that where, uh, you know, uh, the number of engineering colleges is so huge and uh, Correct, yeah. you have and an engineering university and yeah, so and numbers, course, they have numbers on their side. Yeah, they have numbers on their side and uh, they get to see things every now and then, right? So today, uh, if, if there's something new coming up, right? Uh, they get an exposure. They're, like there are, uh, there is a street where in Bangalore where you can get any kind of hardware you want. Where is that? Uh, it's in Bangalore. It's called SP SP Road, uh, close to Majestic. I just see. like uh, so, Lamington Road in Mumbai. Uh, correct. So you, you really just, really you just go there and uh, you you can get anything from an assembled. Uh, you you can take uh, your system. Tell them that okay, I want this system to be rectified. They'll, they'll do whatever it wants. I see. And then they'll give you a proper running system back, right? Uh, yeah, so right from just getting a resistor to getting a uh, a full flash system, it's all there on that road, and it gives you that vibe uh, as a techie, right? True. That I need to explore something more, True. and and they have everything for display. There, that wow. this is the new trend which is going on. And they're knowledgeable. Even the the guys selling doing the sales probably would know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Back in our days, in 2002, uh, we had to go to Bombay. <laughs> to Lamented Road to buy hardware, uh, you know, at affordable rate yeah. because many things were not available here. Yeah. So those were the days. Yeah. No, but I think good thing is there are there, there's online shopping today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So definitely, uh, folks can. It's a it's that. a it's a leveling uh, leveling uh, play field in that sense. Yeah. Le it, it turns out a little. Uh, you you may not get the 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 face to face connect in that yeah. right. Like what actually uh, are the other things that could be hooked onto this, right? Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, with uh, with information available online, you know, definitely uh, there, there there's a lot of uh, online shopping that folks can get hooked onto. Right? So, last question, where do you think, uh, if you have to give three or five suggestions in terms of what Goa should be doing, what would it be? Uh, for IT, you need to say, or? For IT, for these kind of skills, to build the skills, to tap the skills because I know it it is easy, easy to criticize but the fact is that there will be a mismatch we set up engineering colleges and then there will be a time lag between the you know time the jobs are available it's probably so so there is a mismatch if we didn't have students we would have grumbled that we don't have students now we have them and they are all taking the bus to Bangalore in the evenings you know you can see them large number of young people now in that sense which 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 I mean okay it's a we need to see it as a phase also no no, so uh, I think Which definitely I one of the things what I feel uh, should improve is uh, good connectivity, right? Uh, that that gives a, a, a better exposure uh, to folks. Uh, I, uh, I, and there should be more, I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, apps which I see today, like Meetup, right, is one of the apps where I do see uh, folks of like-minded thoughts can actually uh, get on hooked to hook, hooked on to right and uh, where in big cities or also no, no, places like Goa you also. can have it even in Goa so you can just go ahead there was a WordPress it. group here which was quite yeah. active for so, some time uh, like that today meetup is there uh, yeah. you can just create your own group and then keep adding so they, it's like a broadcast group right? okay so anything happening on that you'll get a mail or uh, you'll be informed about uh, yeah so uh, yeah, uh, I, I do see those things available uh, uh, and yeah, eventually things will grow, right? Uh, there is do we have place. enough role models here at the moment? Uh, even if they are not there here, right? Uh, yeah. I don't think the world is uh, a, a small, small I mean, village. I think the world is a small place today, right? Uh, doesn't matter. So yeah, I think information is there available everywhere. So True. so. We, it's just that people need to reach out and figure out uh, what they need to do. Google so, Developers Group has been active yes, here. I think Google is, uh, has, has, has invested so much in open source. I see. Right? And uh, we've linked up with some of the young guys, you know. Uh, right. This, uh, what's his name? Nike, Nike, uh, Tanmay, Tanmay Nike and uh, all that. So we uh, got working quite well, like you know, with them. Though they are a generation apart. You all right. were, you all were 20 years younger than us. They are probably 40 years younger than us. <laughs> no, not that it matters, yeah. but you know, they are knowledgeable, and we respect them for that. Right. Right. And it's a new generation, and 
they will go they will go much further than what we tried but you know some continuity is required right. both from our side and from their side so they are doing it they are doing it i remember we used to struggle to understand ipv4 and ipv6 oh, at that God. particular yeah. point in time yeah. right and today uh, you don't even think of it we don't even think of it i mean we we uh, uh, we used to get scoldings on why certain numbers were used uh, why why you couldn't use a better number uh, for ipv4 uh, and then we were taught about uh, network topology i, I doubt uh, today really people try to give so much so what i realized is uh, the wheel is expanding right the wheel is getting bigger and bigger and the focus for everybody to learn the elementary things is missing out of okay. so there is uh, i was speaking with uh, a few folks uh, who have uh, been associated with uh, founding wipro right uh, services and uh, they have noticed how the it revolution has happened i mean they, it just started with um, just being a offshore develop uh, offshore development uh, unit right with just four five people working into it and uh, today like thousands of jobs yeah. are there available right but uh, yeah it's just not today the uh, today most of the folks just focus on what is required uh at that particular point in time right the connect with the history is is something i i see yeah. it's missing out right uh, why this was done like this what is the significance of that i think that can only come with uh with people connect saying what were the problems i was facing right or we were True. facing and how it got evolved from there we need to capture these stories i yes. agree with you fully on that Yes, definitely. See, because otherwise it looks like shorthand. No, we suddenly magically reach. Yeah, suddenly here, but magically. So, I mean, if if today people start on with, they just start on with either uh, the Windows 11, Windows 10, or they start on with Ubuntu or Kali Linux or something like that. Now, how that it has evolved, evolved, right? The kernel. Huh. Yeah. The kernel has evolved. What it was like uh, a few thousand lines of code at one particular point in time. That was 32-bit computing <laughs> there back then. It's 64, right? Well, but, okay. But I, I remember Dr. Anil said. I have to mention Dr. Anil said here. In 2003, uh, and Dr. Anil said was head of department of computer science in PCC, and um, uh, SC Computers Agnel. Agnel. Okay, he went to Agnel and he said, "I want a uh, AMD Athlon 64-bit uh, processor." Yeah. At that time, Agnel had never sold a 64-bit processor before. I think nobody in Goa had bought one. So he asked him, "Are you sure you want to buy this?" Yes, I see. He said, I I I want to buy this. I'm sure 64-bit. And I believe Dr. Anil said in 2003 installed uh, Linux on on that 64-bit. And the kernel 2.6 supported 64-bit computing, wow. and it used to fly on that machine. Really? It used to fly. So I think it broke AMD Athlon 64. It was the processor, and it broke all performance benchmarks. Wow. Yeah, Windows at that time was still 32-bit. I think 64-bit Windows came in some 2007, 2008. And this was 2003, and I still remember remember that the kernel was so superior, so sophisticated that it used to support 64-bit computing. Okay, rapid fire round. Yeah, only one line answer, uh, 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 for yeah, both yeah, of you. Okay. Favorite uh, OS. Mandrake all time, all time Mandrake. It's no longer there. It was Mandriva later on, but Mandrake. All time fine. Mandrake and now today. Now Raspberry Pi. No, no, one sec, one sec. Okay. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. And all time. All time Ubuntu. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, the person who inspired you in the open source, free open source journey. Frederick Nora. No, 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 sure. Frederick Nora. Point number one. Frederick Nora is big time spammer. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Frederick Nora and Sherman Nye were the two key reasons why I moved to Linux. <laughs> You're just being kind to us. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm dead serious. So I think we had, yeah. we had a good group. We had a good group. Everyone, everyone. Yeah, we, had a, yeah. we had a good team. It was amazing. I remember. Uh, everyone, everyone in their own and, way. And, and yeah, I have and to and mention Dr. Anil Seth. Very, very yeah. encouraging factor. Uh, Arvind Yadav, Bijan Shah. Shah. These three were extremely encouraging during all. Guru Nandan Bhatt. Guru Nandan yeah. Bhatt for Dr. me. Dr. Guru Nandan Bhatt. Yeah, he used to, he used to be rare when I was coming into okay. the three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, He time. was already on his way out. Yeah. yeah. Vivi Kamal. So. Vivi Kamal. Yeah. And uh, Animesh, Animesh Narurkar at yeah. that time. Biggest regret of uh, using Linux. I don't think I have any. I continue to use Linux, so I don't have any regrets. <laughs> uh, no regrets as such, but one uh, shortcoming of mine. In fact, uh, I was so focused. See, back back in 2001, Linux throwers used to say that Linux will take over and Windows. The desktop, the desktop. So I focused on Linux uh, software development okay. on Linux, GTK, Qt, and all that. Okay. Uh, but 2003, when I graduated, there were no jobs on Linux. So you know, it was a shocker for me at that time that you know that what I had learned was of no value to me to, in, when it came to yeah. earning money. So I had to switch to development of Windows. So the economic side, you know, I became much wiser. 
you know so i, I remember uh, so there was uh, one student who came to me who wrote to me rather okay uh, so i had introduced uh, open gl in uh, piece uh, okay. open gl is open gl is a uh, open source uh, graphics graphics library. yeah okay. Graphic library. Right. okay so earlier we used to use com for computer graphics we used to use uh, i forgot there was some uh, old software which w would not give you a good graphics okay. li uh, library at that particular point in time in windows and i had actually uh, got the students exposed to open gl and i i was very happy to see one student had actually thanked me in a mail uh, for uh, really for actually introducing it i mean i had my own struggles to get it to the students yeah yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, yeah definitely it was that that mail gave me a lot of satisfaction that I at see. least one person really? was benefited out really uh, okay coming back to rapid fire uh windows on the desktop i mean sorry gnu linux on the desktop did it manage did it not manage why why not manage manage everyone taking over a desktop everyone was talking about that now that was a big battle then but the battleground uh, seems to have shifted yeah i think uh, today we are all on the cloud right um, so yeah everything uh, uh, i think there are a lot of a uh, lot of I think the most used operating system on the cloud is uh, Linux. Linux, right? So I wouldn't really worry if uh, if uh, folks are using uh, Windows or Linux on the mm. on the system because your major computing happens on the cloud and that is all managed on with with uh, things like, with operating systems like Linux. So Biggest change you see between then and now, twenty years back and now. Yeah, we are all connected. <laughs> <laughs> that we time we were physically connected. Yeah. Now we are. Now we are. Yeah. One big change I want to mention. Uh, you will agree. Installing a RPM on Linux was a nightmare back in 2002. Uh, uh, RPM which worked in Linux, uh, Red Hat 7.2 never worked on Mandrake or uh, Debian yeah. or or any other distro. Uh, it was a nightmare. Different versions were not at all compatible. But now it's it's a breeze. Installing software on any any Linux operating system is is a breeze. So that's one area where I see a big change. So installations, uh, un, uh, installations, user interfaces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, KD. The the uh, there's so much improvement in that area, right? How how the focus has been gone on how how to reach more and more people, right? Uh, tremendous exposure is gone. It's, it's like I said, uh, people can actually take a Raspberry Pi. Use it for school projects. Use it for university university projects. That time we had to have a desktop that we had to have a uh, a system on, right? Today it's just like a credit card size uh, computer which anybody can carry anywhere. I can just take my uh, uh, Raspberry Pi to any place and I can just plug it in and I can give a demo to whoever I want on whatever things I've done. Your biggest surprise in the world of free and open source. The biggest surprise came in 2003 when uh, Frederick Norona did a demo of Freeduck, which was a live uh, CD distro, and that uh, Linux distro was no. meant for education. No, no, that no. That was no. one of the biggest. I surprises. didn't do it. I didn't do it. Yeah, you did it. Yes, I remember. I, I did monkey driving. No, no. Freeduck. Because still today I cannot install. I I was fascinated by the concept of a live CD uh, distro, uh, uh, uh. which was running only on the RAM. Without installing it, you could run the operating Freeduck. system, and that it ran well on a 64 MB RAM system, Pentium yeah, no. 3 64 MB. <laughs> And it had amazing uh, educational tools. I don't know what has happened to Freeduck. I off late. I'm out of touch. But Freeduck was a game changer for me. If, if you ask me, yeah, so that was I, the biggest surprise. And Chairman, what surprised yeah, you? I think I would have two surprises, right? One which uh, which was demoed during the ECAP, right? Uh, uh, that time, and I remember uh, uh, we could just pull out the drive, like I said earlier. We could just pull out the drive, and the system would still continue to run. <laughs> Who right? demoed this? Uh, uh, I remember Guru Nandan, but right. actually showed it to us. Uh, he was a biz. Uh, yeah, he was a biz. And, uh, and then uh, towards uh, 2010, like I said, I got exposed to Raspberry Pi, and I was amazed by what a small device can do, right? On that. I device. see. So yeah, I think definitely this was the two uh, things. One, yeah, one one more slightly not so surprising, but yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. EXT3 file system, uh, uh -huh. Windows Fat 32 was highly unstable. You know, if you <laughs> improperly shut down the PC okay. of Windows. Okay. Oh, yeah. When you restarted it, that blue screen where the disk check would start, you know, I that see. that is to corrupt the file system. But EXT3 was crash proof. That's what we were told. So what I used to do is I used to deliberately switch off the PC okay. with Linux running, 
and restarted to see whether it would be stable or not. We did it five, ten times, you know. I see. And uh, nothing happened really? to the distribution. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I agree that <laughs> EXP2, EXP2, EXP3, Razor FX. All these, actually, my biggest surprise is that all these subtleties were lost on me. I, I te Technicalities were totally gobbledygook. <laughs> I could understand what was the story and I could, uh, uh, you know, prize out the story in non-technical terms and all. But till this day, I cannot, although I've survived so many years on GNU Linux, I cannot install one. I've never tried to. I wouldn't try to. But 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 I still use it and I find it fascinating. Yeah, installation has evolved like anything. It's a, it's a breeze now. Even a kid can install a Linux yeah. OS on the on. Not on, a kid like me. Yeah. yeah. No, anybody can install Linux. Uh, but back in those days, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Yeah. It wasn't so smooth. I think it's not only today. It is available pre-built also. So yeah. you don't even need to install. Just just plug when, it in. And when you had the fiasco with Windows Vista and Windows Millennium in 2007 and 2000, uh, I think three. At that time, uh, many computers, or hardware companies, used to ship their uh, hardware, laptops, and desktop with Linux for rather than Windows really? because they didn't want to take the chance. Really? Because the only, PCs never used to boot up at those times. I think the only challenge which I remember at one particular point in time we used to have was plug and play. But I, definitely, that's 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 over. That, that's that's gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. gone long back. Yeah. So yeah, uh, plug and play was probably uh, attaching a USB yeah. also not the same. Part. <laughs> mount, 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 mount. Yeah. You have to mount. mount command, yeah. You have to give a command yeah. to mount it. So people don't understand what is that mount command, how to look yeah. at it, uh, where where it reflects. So yeah. I, I I sometimes get uh, uh, so people, people yeah. they just say okay this is not working. I say okay what happened? Why it is not working? So then then sometimes I have to show them like okay this is what the internals happen as. Uh, as you plug and play and yeah. which corporation has done the most for free and open source in your view i think google uh, is what i think uh, they continue there are a lot of uh, uh, my company dell also does a, a lot of work on open source uh, so yeah i think uh, there is a lot of work like kubernetes is a game changer uh, in a word how would you explain kubernetes Kubernetes is basically like, uh, it's more of a on the cloud solution, right? Uh, where, uh, what, I, I can scale up the load or, or the traffic on my uh, servers, right, based on Kubernetes at, at whatever point in time I want. So like the, towards December, when the sales are more, Kubernetes would scale up, have more and more servers available, right? Versus uh, when it comes to January, February, probably the sales would go down. And, uh, you don't need so many resources, so automatically you will save on that particular cost, right? So yeah, there have been lot of been lot of work that uh, has been happening on open source uh, uh, on that, right? One or two or three main. I, I believe sorry, IBM, sorry. IBM has done yeah. immense work uh, for for Linux especially. Uh, 2002, they donated one billion dollars to the Linux movement, and uh, they had released these beautiful ads on Linux Prodigy Kid. Till date, I have not been able to find a HD version of those ads. Those ads are there on YouTube, but very, very low resolution. I wrote to certain executives in IBM based in London, and I told them, look, can you give me a high-definition version of that ad? Because it, it's a beautiful ad, I see. Linux Prodigy. It's a series of ads, in fact. But then a reply came that they don't have access to the archives. You know, they don't I know see. where it is. Yeah. Wow. 2002, they were released. Yeah. And of course, Ubuntu is spreading those free yeah. softwares, yeah. Uh, those yeah. free CDs, yeah. Yeah. which Mark yeah, Shuttleworth, yeah, 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 Mark yes. Shuttleworth yeah. cyber yeah. astronaut, tourist, and all that. So Ubuntu has done a lot of work. Uh, in the, in the moment. And they would tell us, don't ask for one, ask for ten, yeah. because it's postage is the costly thing. So they have uh, the Snappy OS, uh, which which is so simple to install, uh, and uh, yeah, I think done a lot of work on that side. Ubuntu. I, I remember the way they started, and uh, at that particular point in time, we were really wondering whether Debian is is my cup of cake, right? Uh, but today, I think Debian is there on every PC. Or indirectly or directly. Indirectly, indirectly. So at that time, they used to say, if you want to do research, you have to use Debian. Ah, correct. <laughs> it was like a geeky, geeky high, like yeah. high IQs kind of so thing. People, people uh, I would be reluctant to tell people to use Debian. Uh, I would, I would tell them use first get used to uh, Red Hat, Red Hat and uh, Suze Linux at that particular point in time. Suze was oh, there. Suze is still there. I forgot to mention. Still Suze. there. So Suze is very good. <coughs> Suze has two versions now. You I don't hear of it so much, though. No, no, but Suze is very, very good. I see. Yeah. German, it's German. Still there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I used to tell folks that you, you first start using Fedora or uh, Red Hat and then user friendly stuff. Yeah. Then move slowly to to Suze and then uh, then start looking at uh, Debian, right? So uh, yeah, but yeah, today it's, it's there on, on every. If you were a policy level. planner, maybe at the government level or corporate level, what would you one or two things you would do to to give it a push in 
in your sector? What what's needed? Tough question. Tough question. I don't have a ready answer. I don't have a ready answer. Maybe probably uh, expose. Uh, 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 I, I think uh, expose open source hardware with open source software, right? Together to schools and colleges. Mm. Uh, there are efforts on. going on in Goa at the yeah, moment, yeah. huh? So Professor know, Vijay Borges and that team. Right. He's got a whole lot of GEC students who are passing out to act as uh, mentors for the schools here. Yeah. And it's actually, they put in a lot of amazing. Yeah, so uh, we, we do have, uh, we, we have a lot of potential, right, uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, the students' thoughts, right. Uh, people today have been coming with such unique ideas, they have out of the... Uh, they, they think out of the bound, right? I've noticed that. And they really are out there to surprise you in a lot of cases. And I think just exposing them to uh, this opportunity should give a lot of yeah. right. Much more than in our time, because yeah, in our right. time, they, I mean, there were limits on growth. There yeah. were very real limits so on growth. There was more, uh, at that particular point in time, more of physic, face to face connect was required. Yeah. Today, information is available uh, everywhere. So. Yeah, folks can leverage that. It's just that I think that there needs to be a kick starter to this. A catalyst needs to come out. I mean, we just need to provide a catalyst to a few folks. And, mm. uh, I think it would work out, in my opinion. Thanks guys, it's been lovely talking to you all and yeah, uh, getting all this brain dump uh, after so many years. I'll give you the dump of Yahoo groups. I have it in my <laughs> Okay, you were saying you were saying that you have the full archives, full, full of, archives of Yahoo groups. I think right since That's 2001, amazing, yeah. 2001 That's amazing. till uh, two, 2011 onwards, I think it became... Uh, yeah, a bit The, the volume started going down because of the Facebook and Orkuts and yeah. other things. But uh, till 2011, uh, I think there was a good deal of activity yeah. on Yahoo groups. Uh, Intel Linux users group go on Yahoo groups. That's true. Uh, that dump I have, yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.